choose between sight or sound. Sound, of course. A musician's choice should be sound, just as a painter's salvation should be sight. To perceive aesthetics, I would rather be blind and hear than to see without hearing. I believe sound is the most important thing in the world, and not just to hear music, but down to the fundamental micro of vibrations themselves. In my own opinion, sight has nowhere near the amount of treasure that sound has. The beauty of art is a treat, but comes secondary to the foundational necessity of sound. Most religious stories begin with sound. Take the common story of the Christ. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 2, the earth was out of form and void. Then the third verse, and let's remind ourselves, it is called a verse. And what does the word verse mean, and where do we find verses? Verse 3, God said, let there be light. After the voidless heavens and the earth, next is a word, a vibration, a sound. God said, and his vibratory command brings forth light. How appropriate is that? That vibration grants us the ability to see, and ultimately, this sound gives the shape to the formless heavens and earth. And if you're not religious, there are plenty of scientific examples. When a sperm goes into an egg and starts to grow, the first sensory faculty we grow is the inner ear, and then around that the person grows, and the other sense faculties join weeks and months later, which is curious or the idea that we have many more connections to the brain through the ears, even more so than the eyes, and those auditory connections flow all the way through us to our feet. Even chemistry contains a law of octaves, where group of elements are arranged into scale-like categories, and you have to wonder which came first. Maybe you're not religious or scientific, you're more a man of reason or logic or rhetoric, well, there are plenty of lines to borrow from endless sources, but take Damon of Athens, who was the musical teacher of Socrates, whom all logical men seem to worship today. Damon said music was so important that the introduction of a new scale would endanger the future of a whole nation. He said it wasn't possible to alter a key without shaking the whole foundations of a state. Of course, times have changed, but I believe we can still find traces of this present in modern day. One example would be 1913 Paris when Stravinsky debuted his Rite of Spring Ballet. The audience is said to have erupted into a riotous mob, or the joy and love and peace of Woodstock 69. And fast forward to the second Woodstock in 99 and the anger, the contempt, the fires and the assaults. Sound has a mysterious power, but say you don't belong wholesale to any one specific tribe of religion, of science, of logic. Perhaps you meander about through all, and you're a curious type, into the mysteries, perhaps an initiate even. The essential read that is the Kabbalion says nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. So when Hermes creates the first lyre by stretching strings across a turtle shell, you get the image of the Trinity. The triad is the man with the lyre, Manly Hall says, in the mysteries the lyre represented the human constitution. The body of the instrument was the physical body, the strings the nerves, and the musician that played the instrument was the spirit. And that was Thoth. Later it was Pythagoras who said music and math were the only universal languages. David, the king of Israel, always pictured with the harp he played for King Saul to drive away demons. Today we think of music as something to play in headphones while we're in the gym, or something in the background as we drive our vehicles, but I think it's a grossly understudied and tragically underutilized science. I notice us moving it away from an auditory appreciation and toward a visual overload. Our Western societies are almost exclusively visual, and I think this is a huge hurdle for me personally because I have a lot less enthusiasm about a visual world. I believe we have eyelids for a reason. 
because sometimes they must be closed. In fact, we must close them, and often, or we die. That's sleep. We can turn off our vision. The mouth can be clenched shut to avoid taste or used to breathe and negate the sense of smell through the nose. We can turn off these senses, but there is no turning the ears off. Even when we plug them still, we hear vibration. We always hear. <laughs>